Welcome everyone to New York City. I'm Ariel. This is Urbanist. Right now I'm trying a new coffee shop that closes exactly at 4 p.m. So I just dropped in right before this live stream started. It's called King Street Coffee here on 30th Street and 7th Avenue. I want to try it out, see how it is. And then let's make our way to Hudson Yards. See what's happening in Hudson Yards because the decorations are up apparently. So hello everyone, I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, I'm super excited to walk around with all of you to show you more of the beauty of New York City. Uh, let's try an Americano here. I'm a little bit bummed that coffee shops now are closing earlier and earlier. New York used to be one of the rare cities that coffee shops would close at about 8 p.m. Sometimes 7 p.m. 7 p.m. would be more normal. 8 p.m. would be uh, a few of them. And then certainly there were a couple that would be open all the way until basically 9 or 10. Uh, but no, after the pandemic, that has changed. Uh, but let's try it out. King Street Coffee. Now do you, ooh, ooh, they're using Sweet Leaf Coffee Roasters from Long Island City. Slash Greenpoint. I think they roast in Greenpoint. And wow, that's really good. Great espresso has kind of a floral taste to it. That's really nice. Oh, I do recommend them. Nice atmosphere too. So let's walk around <laughs> here. We're seeing what used to be this neighborhood. Right now, this neighborhood, we're gonna walk through Hudson Yards. We're already starting to see the skyscrapers peek in right there in the distance. Right there. That's one of the skyscrapers peeking in from Hudson Yards. So we're only three avenues away. I want to start here. I think this is a good contrast. Right now, this neighborhood is, is fairly nice. It's definitely getting a lot nicer with this area of Nomad, north of Madison Avenue, or north of Madison Park, Square Park, that is. A lot of high-rise hotels are popping up and residential buildings. But before this ever was a nice ritzy area of shopping towards 34th Street with uh, Macy's, Herald Square, and high-end residential and hotels, and also the Garment District, this was one of the worst neighborhoods in all of New York City. And the thing is, it was so bad, this was called the Tenderloin, because apparently there was a cop who was transferred up here to this area of New York City back in the mid-1800s mid, 15, eh, mid 1800s. and he said mm, to one of his uh, trainees he was like back downtown I was eating a good chuck up here I'm gonna eat a sweet tenderloin meaning that the guy is going to make a lot more money due to his corruption because here there was a lot more dens of vice in order to clamped down on the massive crime that was happening here. There was gambling, prostitution, the list goes on. The police decided to make a show of force by building a castle-like structure here at the Tenderloin. That changed when Macy's moved in, the garment industry moved in as well, so it wasn't as seedy anymore. It became very, it became very industrial, and now, it's becoming high-end residential. Let's take a closer look after all these cars pass. Cedric says, wow, Hudson Yards used to be a mess in the jungle. Well, Hudson Yards is a bit further down and Hudson Yards used to be just mostly train yards. But cool police station, yeah, cool police station. I would love to walk in. So apparently this is to allow horse and carriage to go right through into the courtyard. Of course, this police station predates the car, as I mentioned, 1850s. So you wouldn't have these tiny little mini cars that I can pick up with one hand. <laughs> At least that's how it feels like. Uh, you will have the horse and carriage. And apparently the horse and carriage would be used to go directly into the courtyard in order to prevent any other criminals from attempting to uh, free the person who was just arrested. So it was it was that dangerous back then. 
Mid 1800s is the Tenderloin, but this one was built a little bit later, 1907. Hello, Inkspire Life says the architecture of New York never ceases to amazes me. Uh, yeah, you're right. Ooh, what is this? Piggyback. By pig and cow. Ah. Ooh, a barbecue place? What? I can go for some barbecue. Ooh. Oh no, it's not barbecue. It's noodles. Uh, I'm disappointed. Hudson, yours is very popular now, says Cedric. Yeah, it is. Hello, Panajotes. Hello, Ron. K says, lovely building. Yeah, lovely building indeed. Lovely building indeed. Hello, Irene. Nice to see you here. Welcome to the broadcast. The one and only Urbanist Live. Hello, Colleen. Welcome. Hello, Ron. Nice to see you here, Ron. Hope you're doing well. Now let's make our way to the skyscraper in the distance, to Hudson Yards. Inkspire Life says, just sign up for your New York City travel guide. Hey, Inkspire Life. It's about damn time. <laughs> I like this. This coffee shop is called About Time. Never heard of it. Uh, hey, Explore Life. Thank you so much for buying my travel guide. Right now, in the comments, write exclamation point guide. On YouTube, you'll get the link. And on Facebook, if Kay could write down the link for people to click on. I have the first ever official urbanist travel guide written by me with all of the recommendations I have for food, drink, coffee, pizza, museums, which observation deck to visit? Should it be the edge, which is just out of sight right down there? Or should it be the Empire State Building or One World Trade Center? There's five of them. I help you determine which one to choose. Also, the best neighborhoods outside of Manhattan to visit, specifically in Brooklyn and Queens, because sometimes you don't just want to see the most popular tourist spots. That is all available on the guide, exclamation point guide right now. So I want to thank a lot of people who have already purchased it. I think I've gotten like 10 purchases just yesterday. It's a special pre-order price because right now all the written content is there. There are 71 places that I recommend. It's via interactive map. Uh, however, I still have the audio portion to lend, to add to it. So December 1st is going to be the official release where everything will be up. And December 1st, the price will go up to $49.99. And it is an in-depth guide. I do not want to make you a bunch of mini guides. Um, uh, some of my colleagues here in New York, they're really talented people. I love all the information that they give but I want to give you just one guide to use. Um, I just want to make it easier for you because I know that's what I would do. So just one big guide where you can use on a huge uh, interactive map, all taken from Google Maps. All right, let me wait over here. There's a lot of traffic here. Jamie says, will you sign it? No, it is, um, it is digital only right now. And the reason it's digital is because it is integrated with maps, which I will pop up right now. Just waiting for traffic. Oh my God, so much traffic here today. It is integrated with maps right there. So fully integrated with maps right there. You can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, you can click on specific places. When you click on specific places, you'll have all the information needed for that specific place. 
the hours, the time, the website, the address. But beyond that, you'll have audio notes from me where I recommend something specific, tell you the history behind a specific location, museum, or, um, or type of food. And also you'll get access to the video links because I have a huge library. I have more than 1,000 videos on YouTube uh, and, and a lot of videos or more, more than 1,000 on TikTok that I put the link to the specific places I actually cover. Uh, Nicole says the link to the TikToks is funny. Yes, I do that on purpose so you can easily look at the video version as well. And I'll show you how a link looks like. Let me pop in right now. Here it is. So here's how a place link looks like. Once you click on the place, you'll get this. You'll get a link to one of my TikToks or YouTube videos. You'll get a link, uh, you'll get an audio portion which you can play within the app. Here I talk about the history of speakeasies. And also I have the video on YouTube that you can see this specific speakeasy, the Reigns Law Room. The guide is also written up so you have portions here where I talk about specific museums to visit. Two of them are very popular and I, and I give you the best pro tips of how to visit them because sometimes they're so big you can't visit them all at once. And then uh, along with every place I mention, I give you nearby food and drink recommendations, including coffee as well. Um, because I know the hardest thing is not just going to a museum or attraction, you can find that in any guidebook but it's knowing exactly where to find food afterwards uh, or beforehand. That was always a pain. I got mute because there's music. Okay, so someone was playing very loud reggae music. Um, I am back. So someone asked, does it work on Android? Yeah, it works on both iOS and Android. Uh, the maps are from Google Maps, so they're very, very accurate. But you will only see the locations I recommend, and plus it'll show you your current location. So it'll be easy to navigate when you're in New York. Uh, no, it is not offline at the moment. That might be a future, uh, future feature, because it is via an app called Thatch. This is a really cool shop. Look, DP Handmade Cigars, that's awesome. Tomorrow at 4 p.m., stay tuned. I'm doing a Q&A where you can ask me literally anything you would like about the guide, how I made it, and the general Q&A about New York City. And if you already downloaded the guide, you can tell me um, what you think of it. Feel free to send me a message. Feel free to let me know if uh, you think you need it. I need, you need something else that would be very helpful to you. Cassia says, I will be purchasing. I live in New, New Jersey, but definitely don't know enough about the city for living only 30 minutes away. Yeah, you know, I wrote, I wrote this guide truly for everyone, uh, but specifically for the people who really love exploring. So it was a bit tough because I'm putting this guide right now on Thatch, which is a great app. And the reason I chose them is because the app is excellent. It's the, the, the fact that the map's already integrated just convinced me to go with them. And, um, and I'm collaborating with them directly. And they, uh, the marketing person told me, oh, like, uh, I would encourage you to write down who this guide is for. 
and it's a bit tough because it's for not just first time visitors, but repeat time visitors. But I think in essence is for people who like to explore, uh, who want to go a little bit off the beaten path. That is who the guide is for. So it applies to both first timers and repeat visitors and locals as well. Joe says, I asked for, for more than a year ago for a guide. Oh, Joe, yeah, yeah, I know. Many people, I've, I've been doing this for 60 years. Many people have asked for a guide, including you, Joe. And thank you everyone so much for asking for this. It was actually a lot of fun to write, a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to put together. Susie says, as a New Yorker, I still need help getting around. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you don't intend on coming to New York, the audio portion will give you some cool stories. Uh, so it, it, there is some entertainment factor in there. Hey, SVL says, how long did it take you to write? Right now, uh, about a month. I started this guide in uh, mid-October, so about one month. One month to write, but years of experience uh, to get it down. Years of making videos and years of answering comments on live, getting to know what people actually need to know the most when they travel, because I get tend to get the same questions it's going to be only natural and basically in this guide I'm squeezing six years of experience into something that you can read in about less than an hour but definitely use as you're traveling around I want to make it as easy for you as possible to visit New York so these are a cool row of houses right here it is really old school New York. Esfield says, also, of course, a, a lifetime of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, also I'm a native New Yorker. So if that is any value to you, I do talk about places that I've been visiting nearly my entire life. I've been to Times Square nearly my entire life. Uh, I've been to Queens. I grew up in Queens. I've been to many parts of Brooklyn, especially, especially since my early 20s, I started exploring Brooklyn extensively. So I have a lot of, lot of experience with New York. Oh, Ron says, must be um, fun dealing with spell checks. You know, there is a Google, I write my stuff on Google Docs first, and it is amazing. <laughs> Google Docs will correct everything and anything for you. And, um, And also, I use an app called Grammarly, which is actually very useful. Oof. Okay, this ended up being... Okay, so, getting to Hudson Yards is actually a much longer walk than I anticipated. So, um, in journalism, when you want to show something cool and then show it or talk about it in the middle of the article, in this case, it's called burying the lead. And in this case, I buried the lead very deeply because now uh, <laughs> we still got a way to go to Hudson Yards. But we're, all, we're almost there. Almost there. So is uh, Hudson Yards a short walk from the Port Authority bus terminal? Adam, it is not a short walk. Uh, it will take you maybe about 15 minutes if you're quick. But if you're strolling 20 to 25 minutes, it might seem short, but the thing is it's so busy in, the, in this area that it might take you a little bit longer. I would recommend just taking the train one stop uh, down to, actually I would, yeah. I would recommend you taking the train one stop down to here to the ECE line, stopping at 8th Avenue, and then just walking one to two avenues down.
Oh, that was so good coffee. Oh, okay. I'm adding King Street Coffee onto the list in the guide. Uh, so stay tuned. And my uh, gimbal is freaking out on me. Uh, now I have my old gimbal and it's also weird. Anyone happen, anyone experienced this with technology? Where there's moments where technology just goes all crazy on you? No. Susie says, you look very distinguished. Susie, I thought I was distinguished. And I just look like it. Cobra says, shave the beard. Cobra, if I shave the beard, I lose all my power. <laughs> Hey, Panajota says, I heard about snowstorm. The snowstorm was in Buffalo, New York, and it was insane. <laughs> uh, I think, what, it was like two feet of snow. Uh, Buffalo, New York, for context, is on the opposite side of the state. New York State is almost the size of France, I think. I gotta find out exactly, but it's, it's, you can compare it to the size of France. So right now, I am in the south of France. I'm in, in, in Nice. And Buffalo, New York is in the north. It's in Normandy. Uh, that'll probably be more of a proper comparison. So it is a huge way away. Unfortunately, we don't have a train system, a high-speed train system, because if we did, I would have taken a high-speed train to Buffalo, New York, just to show you the immense crazy snowstorm. Terrell says, are you a gamer? Do you play City Skylines? I used to be a gamer. I have not really played that many video games in a while. I indulged recently in a little bit of Halo, uh, which was wonderful. Um, Halo 2 specifically. And did I ever play City Skylines? I never played City Skylines. Now I'm very tempted to play it. Um, not just bikes. Great YouTube channel about urbanism covers <laughs> on his live streaming channel. He has a separate live streaming channel. He plays City Skylines. When I was younger, I would play SimCity. I would play a lot of uh, building games. Railroad Tycoon, Sim Golf, uh, roller, roller Coaster Tycoon. The list goes on. I would play countless building games. Civilization as well. Right there, the edge. I gotta go so for some warmth. Let's go for warmth and I'll show you more of the buildings in a bit. <laughs> Kay says, you looked extremely smart when you went to your premiere. Oh, okay, thank you so much. That was a Paul Smith suit I bought in London uh, during the Queen's passing, unfortunately. Did an impromptu to, uh, trip to London and um, Decided to visit Paul Smith store. Hello says, how are you doing? Yes, coffee. Yeah. The Edge is fantastic at night. Yes, The Edge is indeed fantastic at night. And I uh, help you decide on the guide uh, where to visit The Edge, when to visit, how to buy tickets. And also the nearby food and drink. Let's go inside. All right, so now we're entering the shops at Hudson Yards. Cassio says, does the guide get any updates? The guide will be in its completion at December 1st. However, throughout the holiday season, while I'm still here in New York, there'll be some small, smaller updates, specifically about the holidays. So yeah, stay tuned. There will be small updates throughout. And then afterwards, there will be a new edition, but it has to be with some time. Uh, so when I notice that a lot of things are getting outdated, there will be a new edition. And the uh, one that you purchased will automatically just upgrade. So stay tuned for that. Because sometimes, you know, places do open and close. Uh, and I, it will require updates. So probably uh, in a year or two. All right. Here we are at Hudson Yards. Ooh, we got a new house from Belgium. Joe says, come and come in and say hi. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
Genesis, I've never heard of this car company. This feels good. Ooh, leather seats, everything. Ooh, I like the leather. This is nice. Ooh, nice cameras. I love the dashboard. Beautiful. Comfy seats too. If I were to do a bench review, I'm gonna make it quick. Hmm, I would give this a, oh, oh, the headrest really is a game changer. Is it bit high? Uh, you know, I'm a very tall 5'2", so I'm almost reaching the ceiling here. So it gets a few points minus that, but ooh, it's comfy. I would give this a, because of the height, 6.8. If it were taller, it would go higher. Here's the beautiful back. Wow, the back seats are truly something else. Only two. Well, technically you could put a third, but it's mostly meant for two. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. This is really comfortable. Let me know if anyone knows information about Genesis. Uh, but wow. Oh, this feels like a movie theater. Oh, the back seats get a higher score. Yeah, this is a car to be driven around. And it has, ooh, there's lumbar support with a, with a massager uh, function. Oh my God, it's massaging my back right now. Look at that, oh wow. I give this a, wow, this is, this is amazing. I give this a very high 8.8 .8 out of 10. This is a great backseat of a car. I got so surprised by the massager in the back. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> the massage functions on all four seats. Oh, all four seats. Yeah, oh, all four seats. Also in the front. Wow, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, what, what company is it? I this never is heard Genesis. Of Genesis. Uh, we're a Korean brand. Oh, Korean, yeah, Korean brand. Okay. Yeah. Is it new? We're relatively new uh, uh, to the US and to, the, um, to Europe. To Europe. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. What model is this one? So this is the, uh, the G90. It's the our S-Class competitor, mm. BMW 7 Series competitor. Um, it was designed by the uh, previous Bentley Bentayga designer. Mm. Um, and so he designed the exterior, the Audi interior designer also came on board. So they joined forces and created Genesis. Oh, that's really cool. And is it electric or gas? Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, petrol. Petrol, petrol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. Of course. Oh, and full sunroof. Look at that. And here is the SUV model. Susie says, just uh, treat yourself. <laughs> and look at that. It folds down. Wow. Okay, everyone. Um, yeah, I might be back for Christmas. <laughs> I never, you know, I never don't like cars too much, but um, that one tempts me. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, the places you've taken me, uh, all the secret places in the city. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Oh, so cool. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to the guy for saying hello. SVL says, every, uh, I'm so intrigued by anything Korean these days. Yeah. 
truly amazing. Wow, beautiful. I didn't ask, I didn't get his name, but uh, shout out, uh, if you're tuning in later, do let us know who you were. Uh, thank you so much for saying hello, I really appreciate that. Uh, that's so awesome. I'm so glad you enjoyed the, my work on Facebook, no less. Uh, you know, I don't get spotted for Facebook too much. Uh, it's more TikTok and YouTube, so it's always nice to see people tuning in on old school Facebook. All right, let's go upstairs, shall we? Okay, let me actually show you where we're at. So right now we're at the shops at Hudson Yards. There's a few different levels. We should be at level two. We should be at level two right now. Lo uh, the lower level has the Spanish market, Mercado Little Spain. And then uh, there's Zara, there's H&M, there's different shops. All the way to the fifth level, there's high-end restaurants. But Najota says, I want my, uh, my ad segments to be like that. You know, uh, I would love to... The key to making good entertainment is always having a good sponsor or two. And I would love to have sponsors where I can just do that. It's, it's a bit hard. Live video isn't as um, popular yet. So I very rarely ever get a sponsor for a live video. Marco says, I'm also seeing you only on Facebook. Oh, Marco. So I got to try these guys again, but I did, I've tried Fuku a few times. They are good fried chicken sandwiches. Hey, Morgan. Morgan, thank you so much for tuning in. Morgan, I hope you're doing okay. Uh, Morgan, thank you so much for the two Canadians. Hope you're okay. Round of hearts for Morgan. Uh, he's going through, he went through a little bit of a scary time in his apartment building. There was a fire scare. So here is Uniqlo. Uniqlo is great. There's going to be popular music playing in this broadcast because we're going to stick to Hudson Yards. Uh, I'm going to show you inside Uniqlo. This is not sponsored by Uniqlo. It's not sponsored by that car company. Um, but I do love Uniqlo, personally. I'm wearing one of their um, shirts right now underneath this uh, turtleneck. Um, and I'm, I'm going to recommend it to you because it's very inexpensive, uh, relatively, uh, for American standards. And also, it just has um, great quality clothing that lasts for me for a while. And if you're here and you're saying in the winter, I know some people are traveling from places that are not winter weather. Uh, you might be coming from parts of South America. You might be coming from the Caribbean, uh, like family that I have from Puerto Rico. You might be coming from parts of Asia where there really isn't a harsh winter. You might be a little bit hard pressed to find good winter clothes that you won't be spending a ton on because you don't come from a country that's wintering. So this is a great place to get some winter clothes without spending, without breaking your bank and having something that, you know, is good, is comfortable, looks nice, but it won't break your brain. So let's take a look. Daryl says, how much do they pay you for that ad? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Uniqlo does sponsor some uh, vloggers. They're not sponsoring me. Not yet. But if they do offer me a sponsorship, I will take in a heartbeat because I do love them. So, for example, if you're looking for a coat, this one's a bit more expensive end because it's made out of wool and cashmere. But it's cool because it's really good construction coat. These are the shirts I've been buying a lot. I really do love them. You crew neck short sleeve shirts. 
They're great for the, usually as undershirts, under sweaters, because the cool thing is you can take off your sweater and they still look like a very nice shirt to wear outside. Also keeps you warm because they're a bit thicker than usual. Don't buy their socks though. Their socks are shitty. Robert says the proper blazer must be on me. Well, yeah, I'm actually kind of shocked how affordable they make their their jackets for. So thank you to all the sponsors who, the sponsor is not Uniqlo today. It is the patrons. So patreon.com slash urbanist or members on YouTube and Facebook supporters, thank you so much. Press that join button, you'll get access to special videos. You'll get access to a full uncut video of, uh, of the real estate uh, places I went to recently. So I don't like the socks. I'm not a fan of the socks. Ignore the socks. If you're in a pinch, if you're in a pinch, you can get men. is the thermals right here this is the thermal section they have thermal turtlenecks if it gets really really cold uh, they have the ultra warm th turtleneck i don't usually go for that because i wear a turtleneck sweater i go for the the ones that are not with turtlenecks i go for the long johns right here go all the way to 3xl so it, it does accommodate a wide variety of sizes and these are really good. 1990, 1990. These kept me so warm during the snowstorms last year. And this is why I get the crew neck long sleeve t shirt. Also 1990. And these are really good. So they have thick. These are the thinner ones. I'll show you the super thick ones in a bit. But these are very good for wintry days like today if you don't want to wear too many layers. And this is the extra warm ones. They're very thick. But they tug to your body, so it's good. So you won't look too bulky wearing them. So I'm just going to show you briefly this section, but over here they have the jackets. Now these jackets are a bit thicker, so they're not as portable. These are the parkas, but these ones are nice. This one I bought in blue. It's a different blue that I got, but this, this one I bought in a slightly different shade of blue. These are block tech, and these are good for rain and for wind. You wear this on top of another jacket in order to stay extra warm. Which, let's see if they have them. Here they are. So these are the jackets I recommend. Ninety dollars. They they are on the pricier end, but they will last you. And the cool thing is they squeeze into a bag that's in the in the interior of this. Let's see if we can open it. Right here. So the bag is attached in the interior and you can uh, actually squeeze it in and put it into the bag and put it into your other bag, to your book bag. And I use this for Chamonix when I went to the French Alps this summer. It was so useful because I didn't need to be too bulky. It keeps you really warm. So if you compare this with the other one, the Block Tech, you'll be all set for winter if you want to be super lightweight. Otherwise, it would be stylish. You can get that coat I said in the front. They also have vest versions if you're if you work in tech. Hey, Jamie Lynn, give me a, a 
Oh, $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Damien Lynn. I appreciate that. It says, okay, buy one. Uh, I don't need one right now. I will need a heavy winter uh, jacket soon. Uh, there was a mishap with the dry cleaners. I took my jackets for dry cleaning and they messed up and uh, they shrunk. So those nice jackets I wore last year, they're no longer. I don't fit into them anymore. Uh, because they all shrunk due to a big mishap. So I do need uh, new jackets. So I do appreciate that. Thank you so much for the $20 super chat. I also use their jeans. So if you see my travel, every time I'm wearing jeans, I'm usually wearing Uniqlo on most of my videos. And here they have the sweaters. Also get turtlenecks. And the cool thing is they have beanies and scarves as well. And if you're looking to dress a little bit nicer in a pinch, they're Oxfords. Pretty okay. Not my favorite, but okay. And blazers also, if you need it in a pinch at $80. <laughs> and if you're an anime fan or a old style Japanese uh, painting fan, they have paintings by Hurukosai, Hurukosai, and also One Piece. That's funny. Wendy says that I never thought about shopping in Uniqlo when I was in France. I did go to Uniqlo when I was in France. You know why, uh, Wendy? Anyone who's been to France. I'm a tall guy. Uh, and I'm a big guy. I'm a big build. Uh, despite me looking like a model on these videos. <laughs> um, I am a big guy. So I can't fit into French clothes. Uh, I. I would, the French make some awesome clothes. I couldn't fit into any of them. Uh, the French brands, I couldn't. So I had to go shopping at Uniqlo in France uh, because I needed warm clothes in a pinch. Um, here, they accommodate for every size, which is nice. So I hope you enjoyed that little sneak in peek into Uniqlo. Uh, I will show you more of the women's section, but it's a bit awkward as a guy on his own with the camera going to the women's section. So maybe another day when I'm accompanied with a female co-host. <laughs> Morgan says it's the hips in Europe, they're too narrow. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely one of the issues with uh, clothes in France specifically. I haven't, ha I love clothes in UK and Ireland. France, I had an issue. Denmark was also pretty tiny. Kay says, tag them and they might sponsor you. Susie says, you need skinny jeans. <laughs> Susie, I think. Uh, that you need to move on from the early 2000s. Those times are over. We have moved on beyond skinny jeans. Now all the jeans are wide leg jeans. John, send 500 stars. Thank you so much, John. Oxford shirts are pretty good for corporate shirts. Yep, Penedrotus, yeah. Oxford shirts, Oxford button downs, to be specific, are great uh, work clothes. Esfield says, if you're 5'2", how tiny are the French? 
Uh, well, SPL, as, as I've said many, many times, it's very important to remember, I'm a very, 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 very tall 5'2", like a very tall 5'2". There's, there's different, different 5'2s out there. Ruben says, what mall is this? The shops at Hudson Yards. The shops at Hudson Yards. <laughs> Gary says, are you saying we're fatter in the UK? I have no idea what's up with the French. Uh, they're, they make clothes for tiny people. Uh, because, yeah, UK is normal. America is normal. I'm not sure what's up with uh, France. I feel bad for any Frenchmen that are, are my build. Here's a shop called Camp, which I think is mostly a kid's shop. But it looks very nice if you're with kids. Looks like a nice shop to visit despite the crying children. Lottery is here as well for mac macaroons, macaroons. And let's go to the main attraction. Adam says, Black Friday sales? Yeah, here you might find Black Friday sales. Not too big, because that'll be more in the medium end. Here we're, most of the shops here are high end, with the exception of Uniqlo and a few. Madewell's here. So there's a variety of different shops here. It's not just super high-end. Madewell is, is like Uniqlo. Similar pricing. I think it's only women at Madewell. Is it Madewell? I'm not sure. Let us know. How new is the mall, says uh, Matt. The mall is a few years old already. It opened around 2016? 2017? One of those two years. Levi's is here now. Wow, Levi's is here. Still makes good jeans. AG, another shop known for his jeans. Don't have too much experience with them. Let me know if anyone knows AG. I'll give you coffee recommendation, which is in my guidebook. Your suit supply. If you need a suit, have a little bit more of a budget, you need a suit in the last in a pinch this is a good a good spot when he asked about copyrighted music so yes uh, when there's copyright music the video will be muted afterwards in certain points uh, and I will be demonetized so I won't be able to make money off the video um, but that's okay I aim to not make the majority of videos like that, so that's why I mute whenever I could avoid music. But since we're in a mall, uh, it's very hard to avoid music and screaming children, so I just I just leave the audio full up. So, yeah, that's why. Uh, so that's why I have patrons out there at patreoncom urban as people who contribute on a monthly basis. So I'm able to make videos like this in malls and attractions and theme parks uh, a few times a month where I don't need to mute, necessarily. B says, looking sharp. Ooh, thank you so much, B. I appreciate that. So right here is a coffee recommendation. I've featured these guys many, many, many times. They're all around New York City. Blue Bottle Coffee. Great coffee. Inside the Hudson Yards is still amazing. There might be a big company now, but oh, I love them. They still make great uh, espresso. Their cold brew is a bit expensive, so there might be better places for cold brew. It's a great, great place. All right.
Susie says, ooh, are we getting a coffee? We started with a coffee. Can't do another coffee. a new shop here let's check it out Justine says get a cocktail oh that does sound nice oh I love the jazz that's playing oh no it's live jazz what this is new I haven't seen this before oh my god oh live jazz oh yeah nothing beats some good live jazz in the middle of New York City Wow, that's good. And there's a Bronx brewery here. That is amazing. Local brewer. It's great to have local beers here, craft beer. That is awesome. this place called Bianco Latte. I would not eat an egg benedict that's left out there only. Oh, do not do that. That does not seem safe. Eggs benedict. You know, funny, uh, Anthony Bourdain said that one of the worst things you can eat that would be, that is not good quality is a hollandaise sauce on the eggs benedict. That's the one thing he's always gotten food poisoning from. Everything else seems nice. Ooh, look at the seating. That's nice. Oh wow. Great place to grab a drink. Tracy said 500 stars. Oh, thank you so much, Tracy. Some pizza too. Couches, yeah, it's rare.
a rosé special. Rose. The rosé cider? Yeah. You want to grab one? I'll have one. Please. Oh, great. Sounds great. Do you want to sit here? Uh, am I able to sit in those back seats area? Yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you so much. Enjoy the music. This is the life, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Some good rosé cider, some jazz at a beautiful New York neighborhood. Ooh, I'm in love. But shall we try pizza? Because there's a pizza place here. It might be terrible. Let me know. Shall we try it? I'll let you decide after I show you more jazz. We have the band's name. I'll find it. Don't see anything right here.
time some time for some pizza. Let's see how it is. I'm not too optimistic to be honest, but we're gonna try. Pepperoni slice, please. Just one. Just one, yeah. All right, so here they are. Oh, they look a lot nicer behind the counter. <laughs> I'll make you a live video. Can I show it? $20. Oh, you're certainly going to get more than $20 if people like this pizza. Oh, yeah? The rose cider. It's really good. Thank you so much for a super chat. Let's sit down. I love that this place actually has couches. That's very nice. That's very good. And we get views. Oh my God. This is a new place, so I haven't seen these views before, but we see views down 32nd? No, thir yeah, 32nd, down 32nd. Wow, you can see beautiful Madison Square Garden down there. And we can see the High Line. Right here is the High Line. Look at that, gorgeous. Beautiful sunset. Wow. Wendy says couch test. It's nice. Firm, firm bottom, which is good. Uh, you don't want it too plushy because the cushion will die. So firm bottom. That's my bottom in order, like a military sergeant. Uh, the pillows are very comfy. That's very nice. I like them. Thank you so much. This actually does look good though. Wow. Susie says, watch out that someone doesn't pinch your drink. I will. So this is a very comfy couch. I like the, I like it. I like it. The firm bottom actually is a good thing. The pillows are nice and fluffy. Um, and 
it actually has quite enough space for me, which is nice. I feel really chill here with the jazz and everything and the views. Oh yeah, this is a Uber bench. This gets a 9.2 out of 10. All right, let's try the pizza. So the rosé cider is delicious. Highly recommend it. I am blown away by the rosé cider. Um, it was only $5.45, really great deal because it's like their happy hour. And look at the pizza. I am now excited for the pizza. It did not look too exciting, but now look at this. No uh, pools of grease in the pepperoni. I like these green chairs. I'm really liking this, this little mini food court. Great job. Let me know uh, if anyone knows the, the designer of this. Sometimes it's nice to know all the designers, but great job. Ooh. Oh, I'm excited for this pizza. The cheese is really melty. So, Ooh, it's greasy. Oh my God. It's the good thing about beard is um, you can save food, you know, for later. So, so you can be later at night and say, like, oh. I'm joking, don't do that. Uh, sitting there is all you need. All you need is a good book. I would come here for a reading with the jazz and the good rosé cider. 100% will come here with a good book. This is a really good vibe and great lighting. This is key, ladies and gentlemen. The lighting is warm. Not super bright white lighting to make you feel like you're in a hospital. But no, it's nice and warm lighting to make you feel soothed as you're enjoying the sunset views. Right now we're at twilight, right by the High Line, 10th Avenue. This is just so well designed. The pizza is really good. I'm actually really stunned by the pizza. I did not expect the pizza to be good. Did not expect this. Um, usually pizzas in a big, mall like this it's good enough to eat but it's not you're in new york it's, it's not good compared to a lot of new york places but this is a really good quality style pizza great pepperoni great cheese that they use the cheese i can tell that it is of a good quality uh great tomato sauce too not too sweet which some typical slice shops are guilty of using too much sugar in order to sweeten their sauce the breading is actually really fluffy, nicely charred right there. So you get a little bit of cheese spillover on the crust. Mmm. Good quality slice. Mmm. Good quality. This is good. This is really good. This beats nearby slice shops. It's not as good, it's not as top as Prince Street Pizza. Prince Street Pizza has a nice, it's a similar style of pizza. It's a square, Sicilian style. That one has a little bit of a extra quality to it. Extra, um, something special. It's hard to describe. But this one is still solid. should it cost? Expensive. Six dollars and fifty-eight cents. It is filling though. I think uh, this is the equivalent to two regular style slices. Uh, Jamie says anything with bacon. Oh well you think so. Anything with bacon is good, yeah. Anything with bacon is amazing. What happened to the anchovies? Anchovies is rare to find in New York. Uh, you can have them added but 
if you go to a slice shop and call or, or you order a pie, but it's rare to find an anchovy slice. Anchovies are more prevalent in Rome. That's where you can find really good anchovy pizza, which I've tried on video. Tracy says, be careful, don't get cheesy beard. It's too late. Oleg says, what? Well, 658, you know, I think it's, it's fair uh, for this area of the city. The lowest you can go on this type of slice, 450. Yeah, you can't go too low with this type of slice. Jonas says, will there be another live stream tomorrow? Yeah, 4 p.m., but it, it will be a sit-down live stream just chatting about the guide. So feel free to ask me anything as we're listening to some jazz, enjoying the vibes. I'll point the camera the other way so you can see a little bit. Ask me anything uh, right now as I'm eating the slice. I'm gonna show you a little bit more. So tomorrow maybe 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 it is tempting I might grab a pizza tomorrow should I feature a pizza tomorrow uh, frost says do I get shy while filming uh, yes uh, but it gets easier pra uh, practice makes perfect certain situations I get shyer other situations to me now it's pretty much normal to walk around with the camera it's much easier to walk around with the camera in a, a big touristy place like this or in the middle of rome with all those wonderful landmarks or in the middle of london uh, it gets a little bit more weirder or awkward for me if i'm in a quiet town where it's most awkward is not when it's very quiet or when it's very loud but it's in that middle area where it's quiet, but not quiet enough. That's where it gets a bit awkward. So when I go to a restaurant where it's mid, you know, people are having somewhat low conversations, that, that gets very awkward for me. Or if it's like a small town, there's people outside, but it's not so loud, it's very awkward. Otherwise, those other extremes are very nice. That's why I really enjoy live streaming in big cities, uh, because this is just a lot more fun. Or sometimes going on a nature adventure like Chamonix, that's a lot of fun. It also depends on the culture. In Ireland, uh, Kilkenny is, is a pretty small, is a very small city. Uh, but the people there were so damn friendly that uh, it felt awesome to live stream there. Reggie, nice to see you here. Someone asked me, are, did I write a guide? Mike, I did write a guide. Write exclamation point guide right now in the comments. If someone could write it down. Jamie Lynn says, uh, Pizza Collective. Pizza Collective is great. I do like them. Cynthia says, I like your turtleneck. What company is it? This one is from an Irish company called Bailey's. I think Bailey's is Irish. It might be owned by a... Uh, Danish company, but it's not Irish, I think, origin. Uh, so Bailey's is the name of the, not the liquor company. It's a different Bailey's. Kay says, you have to come back. I can't wait to go back to Ireland. I mean, truly. Okay. I hope, I hope, I hope you have my room ready. I just joined the live stream. What is the name of the spot of Hudson Yards, Jim? The thing is, in the front of this pizzeria, it just says pizza. So it's some generic brand. They don't have a name for the place. Uh, but I'll show you the floor. I think we're right now on the third floor. No, we sh yeah, we're on the third floor, third level. All the way towards the back. Panajota says, since we're the same age, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, before I answer that, someone asked best seasons to visit New York. My opinion is Christmas 
and summer. On the guide, right down the exclamation point guide right now. Okay, there we go. The link is popping up. On the guide, I will answer that question. Uh, so right now is a special pre-order price of $29.99. Once it's fully up, there will be a section on seasons because people are asking a lot of questions about the seasons. And I will break down why each season is interesting. Uh, but my top two is Christmas and summer. I'll break down exactly why. And then if you want special rates on your hotels, since if you're buying the guy, you're probably coming to New York anyway or traveling very soon, write exclamation point hotels right now in the comments. You'll get a link or go to the description. There's a link there that will get you some of the best rates you'll ever see. Better than bookings.com, better than Expedia, better than anything. Trust me on this. Really compelling rates. Uh, fellow viewer Kay said that she found one of her favorite hotels, $800 cheaper than usual. Blows my mind. Uh, so between 15% to 70% off. Uh, all range of hotels anywhere around the world from uh, low-end hostels, some, some hostels or definitely low-end hotels to super high-end luxury hotels as well. Ooh, now I got the crust left. Uh, Jota says, where do I see myself in 10 years? Um, directing big Hollywood films. I want to tell big stories. I like, to, I like storytelling, but I want to be able to do that in, in a cinematic way too. So I want to tell big stories and um, not just about history. I want to take what I've learned about history and make excellent sci-fi out of it which is something that I really am passionate about. So I, I envision myself directing big Hollywood action sci-fi epics. Hmm. Mandy says, what do I type for the hustles? Okay, if you can provide the link, Everyone, give a round of hearts to Kay and Joe for being moderators on Facebook. Uh, she's posting, posting these links. Kay, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for posting the link. Uh, if Kay can post the link on Facebook. But if you're on YouTube, write exclamation point hotel. Oh, exclamation, exclamation point hotel. So the link will pop up. Or it's in the description of the YouTube video. Facebook, unfortunately, there's no support for a chat bot. I wish there was. What style pizza was I eating? Pepperoni really good when will you be doing a full movie about Molly Malone says Ron you know I would love to make an orchestral version of cockles and mussels for Molly Malone I know S field would love that um, that that is something I would love to make a, a movie in Ireland that would be amazing that would be amazing yeah Nicole says, do you have any concrete plans for travel? For January. Not yet. Not yet. I'm a little bit in a pinch. Um, my best, uh, where I, in terms of business, where I make most of an income is by making New York videos. Traveling this past summer in Europe was very fulfilling personally, it was very fulfilling artistically, and making live videos that no one, really no one has done before. It was very fulfilling for many viewers who love seeing these places. Economically, it wasn't. Uh, it kind of sucked, uh, at least during this past summer. Maybe YouTube Shorts will take off again uh, once I can monetize and I can make up uh, income from the videos I made. Um, the reason it was a bit tough was because I lost monetization when traveling 
on Facebook. And then the second thing is, um, Europe is expensive overall. And then B, um, I didn't get that many viewers on my live videos as I expected. I expected to get more viewers, uh, like increase my viewership, I didn't. Uh, luckily, on YouTube Shorts, it has paid off because my Europe videos are doing extremely well, also on Instagram, extremely well. So I'm getting a lot more uh, followers from it. So it is paying off, but it has been delayed. And that's why I'm a little bit in the pinch with uh, trying to figure out, because I want to keep on traveling. Business-wise, it, it's a it, it's it's not as uh, easy. No. I'll say that. Nicole says, maybe this will change with a bigger audience. I think so. I, I'm optimistic. How many people we have been tuning in right now? 379. It's okay. Um, yeah, the bad thing with YouTube is there there isn't steady income. Only with, um, yeah, with recorded videos there is. So I gotta figure out how to do that. But that's why, and also, apartments here in New York are very expensive. It's hard to afford both. That's what, that's in the position I'm at right now, you know. It's it's um, a little bit of a either or scenario, either here in New York or traveling. I want to do both because I would love to do both, you know. Um, I got do interesting things like uh, make a guide or uh, um, have cool sponsors, things like that. So I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. But I do want to travel. Inspire Live says, I think you'll have big numbers when traveling, when uh, doing New York videos in Christmas. Yeah, I'm counting on it. That's why I'm here definitely for Christmas. What's the plan for Thanksgiving? I'm with family. I'll be live on, on Friday, but uh, Thursday I'll be with family. This will be a fun time. We're gonna we're gonna see Glass Onion, Knives Out too. I'm so excited. All right, that was a great pizza. I recommend it at this place called Pizza. <laughs> Does it have a creative name? All the way in the back of the third floor. Let me finish this up. Cheers. Do you think there'll be jobs in the urban urban design sector, Zooey? Maybe New York. You're competing a lot. You might be a better off going to smaller cities, especially upstate New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut. I think you'll have more success, or out west, or Florida. I think so. Yeah. I'll, I'll, unfortunately, I think New York. There might be too much competition. Also, I might be, there might be a lot of bureaucracy with urban design. So someone left a super chat. Who was it? Ah, uh, bringer of life. Hey, bringer of life. Uh, please get another slice since we have the same name. We do bring our life. I do like your, your username. Is your name also Ariel? That's awesome. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, get another slice. You know, let me show you another pizza in the next live stream because otherwise I'm going to get too full right now. No, I was really filling. Thank you so much for the, for the super chat. Please keep a closet uh, bare minimum with your parents and just be normal in Europe, says Tracy. Oh, oh yeah, Tracy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you could cast any actor in your movie, who would you choose, says Frost. Who would I choose to play me? Um, my own movie? That's tough. Um, a lot of actors, a lot of good actors I know are older than me. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, I'll say that. Timothy Chalamet doesn't look anything like me, but maybe he he can step up to the challenge 
and adopt my look. Timothy Chalamet, I hope you're up for the challenge. Totally says, what's your day job? Totally. This is my day job. Content creator by day, content creator by night, content creator also in the middle of the night, content creator early in the morning as well. Yeah. Thanks for our life says, Urbanist starring Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Oleg says, among living actors. I can see Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac is old, significantly older than me. I think he's 10 years older than me. Um, but yes, he does He does have some of the same beard. And he's also Hispanic. All right, everyone, you ready to continue walking around through Hudson Yards? I hope you enjoyed uh, this portion of the live stream. What kind of content do you create in the middle of the night, says S Fields? You know, YouTube is not my only platform. You know, I won't, only fans. I gotta do some of that as well. No, I'm joking. No, no only fans on my channel. What's your advice for younger people moving into New York City? I have a big budget. Uh, Consider Queens. Queens is very good, good prices for rent, and they're really good neighborhoods. Specifically, a few in Northern Queens, really good neighborhoods, uh, very lively too. Uh, otherwise, if you go to the very cool neighborhoods like Williamsburg or Soho, you're going to be spending a lot of money for a small bedroom and sharing it with three or four roommates. Which, which some people might like, but yeah, consider points. Can you wish my mom Elaine a happy birthday? Tyrion, Tyrion, it's Elaine's birthday. Oh my God, that's so cool. Happy birthday, Elaine from New York City. Elaine, I hope you're having the most wonderful birthday ever. Uh, Irish urbanist, let me know how to say happy birthday in Irish uh, because Elaine is tuning in from Ireland. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, LA and I so appreciate also you being a mega urbanist. It's a pleasure sending you postcards. A round of hearts for Elaine from Ireland. Uh, that's so awesome. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Hope you're having the best day ever uh, with your son, Tyrion, and everyone else. Are you in the Whole Foods? Let's start. I can't film in Whole Foods. Whole Foods, they really don't like cameras. Uh, but I'll show you here on the window. All right, let's continue walking around. Gary says, for, for a young person moving to New York City, having a rich mom and dad, it, it will help. So the Whole Foods is right there. Excellent pizza, guys. Excellent. Have a good day. So the pizzeria was right over here, simply called Pizza. They must have a business name, but in the front is this is Pizza. And it's located in this like mini food court area with uh, a coffee shop in the front called Bianco Latte. I think uh, it's just the, the pizzeria is under, e, uh, under Anna, which is the same as the bar. So the bar was really good too. Great, great value for that rosé cider. You won't really, you won't find drinks that inexpensive anywhere in, Man in this area of Manhattan. That's for sure, especially on the weekend. So excellent, excellent value. 
And let's go further upstairs. We're gonna do that. Samrat says, uh, what movies are you talking about? Um, Sci-fi movies. I have nothing written yet for sure, but I have a few ideas. If you want to read my first sci-fi story, you can go to Retrowave by Ariel Vieira. Search it on Amazon. And it's available on Amazon almost everywhere. All right, we visit Uniqlo. Now let's go further up. Cynthia says, do they have Wi-Fi? Where are you referring to, Cynthia? Specifically here? Uh, great question, Cynthia. I think they do. I never used it. But I think they do. They should have Wi-Fi, yes. Otherwise, you can go to the Shake Shack. Should have available Wi-Fi, which is on the next floor up. Sometimes these shops like Uniqlo and Zara have their own Wi-Fi too. So you'll be you'll bound to find Wi-Fi here. Susie says, I, re I really got into Retrowave once I started. Wiki says, so what is actually happening in Hudson Yards? This, lights, food, Uniqlo. The vibes are happening here, the Christmas vibes. Kay says, Retrowave is a great book. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you, Kay. I really appreciate that compliment. All right, here's Zara. I gotta admit, these guys sell great clothes. Uh, the way they make them is a bit controversial, but clothes is actually really good. Well, it says, show us the golden air balloon. Yeah, we're walking that direction right now. So Shake Shack is right up there also with the entrance of the edge. I'll show you that in a bit. Sam says, are you talking Blade Runner, Dune type sci-fi? Blade Runner is definitely an influence on me. Dune as well. Dune is compelling. I don't like sci-fi stories that take place in deserts. So I would never make a sci-fi movie in the desert. I kind of don't like that vibe. It's too Western for me. But um, I do love how Dune makes their entire political system. It's fascinating. Uh, and I, I love how they integrate religion and mythology into it. So I would definitely do that. But I think my type of storytelling would be more like Game of Thrones in space. <laughs> That's the type of sci-fi I'm aiming for. Wow. Is this bigger than last year? This looks bigger than last year. Dazzling, says Susie. Oh, yes. Hey, man, I just wanted to thank you so much for all the walking New York City secret videos. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Wiki Tiki. I appreciate that. Susie says, I'll make a romantic movie. I would love to make a, a sci-fi romance movie. I have one in mind specifically. I would love to make a... I, I would actually have romance in all my movies. I love I, yeah, I love st I love move epic movies that have a romantic plot into it. I'm kind of tired now. There's a lot of movies kind of suck nowadays because they don't have they don't have a good love story in them. People are asking, or is New York back since the pandemic? Yeah, New York feels back to normal. At this point, back to normal. Uh, there's a lot of tourists here now. 
basically all tourism is back to normal with the exception that there's still no Chinese or if very little Chinese here. Um, there used to be a lot more pre-pandemic. They're still going through lockdowns. Otherwise, you'll see every other type of tourist here. Ben says, I think all movies are struggling with originality. Yeah. Robert says, do you prefer Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars is more entertaining. Star Trek is more compelling. I like both. Um, but I gotta admit, Star Trek it is definitely compelling. Gary says, can you do the Vulcan hand? Yes, live long and prosper. 100%. Oh, you do? Oh, thank you so much for sitting in. Appreciate it. Have a good day. All right, shout out to the other guy who said hello. All right, let's go to the upper floor. Susie says, uh, there's a Rolex shop. Yeah, there is. Apparently, you can't buy a Rolex at a Rolex shop, I've heard. It's a strange phenomenon. I'm not, I'm not really into the watch world yet. Um, but it's an interesting phenomenon. Find Janice. She might be here. Says, oh, Janice is here? That's so cool. It's a, it was a pleasure. Um venturing through Janice's neighborhood last year in Wood. Tracy says, I wish Kay would do a video of Irish uh, holiday decor. I think that would be cool. Kay posts on Urbanist of the World, so stay tuned. Urbanist of the World is a group on Facebook. I don't have a Discord, but I do have a Facebook group. You can chat with fellow Urbanists of the world. Will you be uh, attaching us, all of us Christmas Rolexes on these month's postcards? This is Gary. I'll do my best, Gary. I'll do my best. Sometimes there are random traits that mega urbanists get. Speaking of um, postcards... I am, uh, I am uh, sending cool Christmas postcards and greeting cards uh, for mega urbanists during the holiday season. So if you want to receive a handwritten postcard for the holidays, you can go at patreon.com slash urbanist. And there you can uh, get access to the postcard club. Choose the mega urbanist option. Wendy says, ooh, uh, Inwood is Lynn manuels Miranda's neighborhood. It is. I think he's currently based in Washington Heights, but that's the neighborhood he grew up in, yeah. Luis says, what's up? Much, much love. Oh, thank you so much, Luis. Someone asked me about the art gallery. You know, um, there's copyright issues uh, sometimes walking through these art galleries, so they don't like cameras, but I'll show it to you from the outside. I love... Lagerfeld Mickey Mouse. This is amazing. Oh my god. That is genius. Bagera says, This is only my second time watching your live streams. I'm loving it. Oh, I'm so glad you are. Oh my god. Oh my god. The NFTs, NFT apes, what their art now 
Oh no. Let me know. Do you think this is art, ladies and gentlemen? Obviously, there's artistry, but is it art? No, this is art. I love this Karl Lagerfeld. If you don't know what Karl Lagerfeld is, is, he was a famous designer. He was a designer for Chanel for, I think, a long time. Uh, he was very well known for his great ponytail, always wearing gloves, stylish glasses. Uh, the man had very good style. Rex Roxanne leaves a super chat tonight at $10. Thank you so much, Roxanne. Roxanne, ooh, thank you so much for the super chat tonight. I love it. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Roxanne says, shoot. I'm not sure what you're meaning, but thank you. Thank you, Roxanne. I appreciate it. Ooh, is this a... This looks like a Basquiat. Wow. So let me show you the entrance to The Edge. So if you want to get tickets to The Edge, it's now getting easier and easier by last minute tickets. And this is how you buy tickets right here. This is a huge ticket screen. The Edge is an observation deck where you can see the full views of New York City. We'll see how to buy tickets. Let's see if tickets are available like now if we wanted to go. Yeah, they are. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, we could buy last minute tickets right now. We could go up if we wanted to. Right now they're $40. 40 for adult, 35 for kids, 38 for senior. And then plus $3.55 on tax, $43.55. Uh, so seniors get a small discount. That's nice. So yeah, you can get more times. They are by time slots. So choose carefully what you would like to do. It is worth it. Check out my videos on the edge. You could get one with champagne. So if you want extra champagne, don't want to think about going to the bar too much. Uh, $10 extra for champagne. There's a flex pass. It's not really recommended. Don't worry about too much flex unless if you're on a date or something and want to be a little bit more flexible. But otherwise, this is not really necessary. They charge you a little bit extra. Uh, and then this one, this is a personalized photo book. I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's that worth it to get a photo book. Yeah, not, not in my opinion, it's not too worth it. I would just go for general admission, to be honest. It's a lot better. But you can buy tickets to the crazy experience. I, call, I think it's called, I forgot the name, the City Climb. You have to actually go to the box office right there. Do you know the capacity? Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. Do let me know how to say your name again. Can't read uh, Chinese characters, but um, do you or or um, or Japanese characters? Um, do you know the capacity? I don't know the capacity, but we are on a Saturday during peak tourism time, or it's getting closer to peak tourism time. So that means that yeah, there is a high capacity. Texas Rose with the $10 Super Chat says, I love everything you do. I'll be in New York City next week and we'll think of your tips. Thank you so much, Texas Rose. Of course, my guide is available if you need an extra guide, but thank you so much for the Super Chat. I do appreciate that. That's awesome to hear. Look at this cup. Nice. Let's check out the, the gift shop. They always have a book section. This is really cool. If you're looking for a quick book, I really do encourage you to coming to gift shops like the, these ones. They have a great selection of specific New York City books. This one is not about New York City, but this is one of my favorite pie shops in the entire world. 4 and 20 Blackbirds. Ooh, their pies are amazing. But beyond that, let's see what to recommend for books. It's a cocktail book called Nightcap. Look at that. Street Art New York. 
Huh. Okay, so right here, 111 Rooftops in New York. I do like these series of books. They're really good series of books, always available. And you get a nice perspective of different rooftops to visit. This is actually very useful if you love going to rooftop bars. Yeah, that's amazing. Mandy says, I would buy a magnet. I'll show the magnets because I know people really love magnets. Statue of Liberty, the memento dream. Do they have any? They do not have the books I really enjoy for history. That kind of sucks. They're all cooking books. It's weird that they have cooking books here. This is a suit you have to wear when going up on the city climb. You can climb the rooftop of the edge. Supervise the course. And they do a breathalyzer test, so do not come drunk if you could do the city climb. Remembering when I did uh, the Edge late 2020, and I was doing a live stream, and they were all panicking. And I think they're about to approach me now. No, uh, I, did, I was doing a live stream, and someone asked me, "Are you live streaming specifically?" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> like, okay, it's a tourism place. It's normal. And there was such a huge group of security surrounding me. I had no idea why. Uh, afterwards, I had no issue. But this happened back in 2020. Let me know. No coloring books. Yeah, usually you do have coloring books. They do. Um, oh, here. This is a great book to find. I want to give you a guidebook like this eventually. Right now, I'm doing a digital guide, but eventually you will see an official urbanist guide with illustrations. And this one I really admire. Uh, but they have beautiful illustrations of parts of New York. Right here. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful guide. Ooh, I want to make something like this. If anyone knows a very good illustrator, let me know in the comments. I would love to do something like that. I've never tried these books. Messy Nessie Cheek. Don't know her too much. Susie says, I want an Urbanist coffee table book. Oh, I would love to bring you one. All right. That was the gift store, but there is some magnets. Or there's some keychains. There's a MetroCard keychain. Look at that. Inspire Life says, hmm, Illustrator. I might be down for that. Ooh, Inspire Life. Benedetta says, fun keychain. Yeah. So that was cool. I do like their gift store. I think uh, it's a great place for souvenirs. New York is interesting with souvenirs. There's a lot of cheap souvenirs in New York. A lot of them. If you go to those big mega stores nearby Times Square, or some other major sites like uh, Wall Street, they're gonna be very cheap. Um, and the prices might not be cheap according to the quality. So you're gonna spend a lot of money for something that might break on you, unfortunately. However, when you go to places like these, they tend to have a bit better quality souvenirs. 
And if you want to go somewhere that's not a major attraction that has great souvenirs, in my opinion, the Strand Bookstore has great, great New York City souvenirs. Um, yeah, I do recommend it. So here's the line. People are already lining up. So you do have to wait in line, so be prepared when you're signing up for tickets. And then right next door is a Shake Shack, which I recommend. You know, if you're here in New York City, if you're not from the U.S. or England, for example, where they have Shake Shack as well, um, it's a great spot to eat, a great American hamburger. They close at 10 p.m., so do watch out for that. And right next door, there is a coffee shop called Jack Stir Brew. They're pretty good as well. Robert says, I w you want a coffee table book about coffee tables. That is genius, Robert. Uh, I never heard of something. Actually, that's genius, Robert. I would love to write that. That would be great. Just photos of coffee tables on the coffee table book. Ooh. Magnolia Bakery, great place to get a red velvet cake, but also try their banana pudding. It is delicious. Uh, but the red velvet cake is the iconic one featured in Sex and the City. Great, great, great cupcakes. Not the best in New York, uh, but they are for a big company now. It's pretty good. Mika says a book about benches. That'd be great, actually. I'd love to write about benches, too. So here is my food recommendation that is in my guide. Miznon. Miznon. Great place to get an amazing pita sandwich. Oh, the pita sandwiches are just on another level. So here, why I recommend is the broken chicken. The rotisserie broken chicken. Ooh, it is just delicious. It will warm your heart, soothe your soul, enlighten your mind. Great place. There's bad cell phone reception down here, so I gotta watch out. But yeah. Really good. And there's plenty of seating. I had a lot of pumpkin cheesecakes from there, says Nicole. Really? I never tried their pumpkin treats from Magnolia. Thank you so much for letting us know. For pumpkin pie, my best recommendation is 4 and 20 Blackbirds in Brooklyn. So right now we are in this area of the city where I feature heavily on my guide. So if you want to have these food places in your map as you're walking around through New York City interactive which a book doesn't offer you can go to the guide oh my god there's an anime set here Mika says, so if I come to Hudson Yards, I'll need a big stomach for pizza, hamburgers, and sandwiches. Do I get it right? You know, you're okay with uh, Shake Shack. There's a lot of Shake Shacks all around the city. So you don't be too, too much in the rush to eat Shake Shack. They're all around the city. Eat Shake Shack when you're more in the pinch. Uh, you want to eat something quickly, uh, not, not travel too far. Um, that pizza was unique. Of course, there are great pizzas around New York City. So it's not a must. That sandwich, though, there's only two of them in New York. And in my opinion, it is a must. All right, let's go outside and show you the actual Hudson Yards area outside. Here's a restaurant called Wild Ink. Ooh, looks pretty. Any plans for the 6th Avenue, fifth, the 5th Avenue, Saks 5th Avenue show? I would love to show it to you. Stay tuned. You will see it on these live streams, Fridays and Saturdays at 4 p.m. Ooh, expensive restaurants. Milos, 
peak. Sherry says it's my first time on the stream. Hey, Sherry. Everyone, welcome Sherry for tuning in for the first time. If you're a first time viewer, do let us know. A real first time viewer. No sarcasm allowed on the on the show, so please let us know if you're a real first time viewer. Ooh, art. Susie says, what's your favorite place to eat in Hudson Yards? Miznon, where I just showed you. My number one place. Wow. I almost want to touch the art, but I won't. I won't. That is cool art, though. I kind of like it. It's newspapers. It's like a big newspaper. Wow. $20,000 for a big newspaper. That was a lot of fun. So now, final stop, let's go outside. Someone earlier asked, uh, will I do Rockefeller Center again? And will I try to go get close to the tree? Hmm, I can neither confirm nor deny that I'll get close to the tree. But yes, there will be a live stream on Rockefeller Center. Scary noise in that elevator, yeah, it is. Imagine going on the edge with that elevator. Sylvia says, Ariel is the best. Oh, I'm so glad you think so, Sylvia. Thank you so much for tuning in. Awkward elevator ride, says Wendy. Yeah, when isn't elevator ride awkward? If you have the ability to not look at your phone during an elevator ride, you have a superpower. Jamie says, say something to a random stranger in the elevator. That's one surefire way to have the cops called on you. So don't do that. Do not talk to random strangers in the elevator. It will terrify any New Yorker. Wow. Here we have the beautiful shawarma. Wow. Look how gorgeous. Built by Thomas Heatherwick. Costs upwards of $25 million to construct. Eight stories tall, the shawarma. And there's lights now on the shawarma, so it's a shining shawarma. Mmm. Shawarma. Mm. Making me hungry. Hey, Brenda. Brenda with a $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Brenda. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hearts to Brenda for a whopping $20 super chat. Uh, Mika says, what is the shawarma? This is the shawarma right here. Shawarma is, is, uh, is, um, is pork or lamb usually. Lamb that is, is uh, skewed, skewed, skewed meat. Oh, I don't know how to say it. Skewered meat, skewered lamb that spins there, there's a name for it uh, how, how do you describe shawarma do let me know in the comments what's the definition but yeah it's it's that meat on the huge skewer spins and you cut it and put it in pita and that's that's what it is but many of you might know it as the vessel so
so we'll, we'll call it the vessel okay everyone this is the vessel that is the official name if you if you insist on using the official name we'll call it the vessel All right, just to avoid any confusion Shorla says it's like a donor kebab yep yep basically donor kebab same thing the shawarma Hey, it's just the worries, but you can move down there. <laughs> okay, that is an example of very um, bad tourist etiquette. The woman right behind me attempted to take a selfie and did not see me standing right here. <laughs> it's like there's a lot of space here. Hey, I'm live streaming here. <laughs> Tina says, take a panoramic photo. I think I will after this live stream. Oh, I wish the vessel was open. It kind of sucks that it isn't. You can walk through it? So there's a few food trucks here now, which is nice, but they're close too early. Serendipity 3 is here, famous food truck. Ooh, nah, famous restaurant. Oh, that is a great recommendation. Ooh, I'm adding that to the guide. Serendipity 3 is a must visit. Uh, it's one of the best uh, dessert restaurants in New York City. Ooh, they have Biria by Ter Toro Ojo, which I've uh, featured in Long Island City. It's nice that they're getting very famous now. And we can walk around? I feel like I'm entering the interdimensional portal that would take me into 1920s New York to hang out with F. Scott Fitzgerald. that he was running to do something about comic-con but uh that was really cool thank you so much for saying hello i appreciate you thank you shout out to the comic-con guy tuning in and say hello Oh, it lights up. <laughs> All right, everyone. 
I appreciate everyone tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. This is the vessel. You can still walk inside. You can't walk up anymore. Um, you can walk inside. It's very nice. You can take a selfie by this blue light. I'm going to step into the portal and I'll see you next time in 1920s New York. I'll see you uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. New York City time for a special Q&A about New York City and the guide I just published. Right exclamation point guide right now. Go to the exclamation the comment section down below and you'll see it. And I appreciate everyone tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day. Now into the portal. Now go.